Hello everyone, James here and welcome to Shard TCG and today we're going to be talking about how to make a TCG. Now it's going to be a little bit of a rant format, I did want to do some bullet points and I've got some things to go through but just everything I think kind of interlocks with each other, it's just going to be like a, a mini podcast style and we're just going to see how this goes. So I'm going to give some tips on how to make your own TCG, some things that you should avoid, mostly things that you should avoid. And we're gonna do it a little bit different from how other channels do their how to make a TCG, where they would cut them out and show you the designs and things. We're, we're gonna delve into the other side of that. So I hope that's something that you're looking for and I hope this video is gonna be really helpful for you today. And if it is, don't forget to leave a like because it really helps out the channel. Okay, let's dive in. So the first thing I want to address when making a homemade TCG is just a way of looking at it. And it might be something that people don't really see at first, but I think of it like a puzzle. When you can have a card that can do X, Y, and Z, and it's all powerful and amazing, yes, that's fantastic. But why not make three cards? One that does X, one that does Y, and one that does Z and the X1 say generates a type of token. The Y card can spend the token. So now you've got these two cards that's linked together. And then you've got the Z card over there. Perhaps the Z card triggers when tokens are spent. So it's a bonus played off the Y. So the X card would generate a token. The Y card would then spend that token if they like. But when a token's spent, this card will get a passive ability, X, Y, and Z. Now, if you go for a format like this, instead of a, a card that generates a token and then can spend a token and gets a bonus from that just passively, you've created a puzzle. And you don't have to tell people that though that sequence of cards is there. Just release them. Release them when you release the game and just keep it a secret. People aren't stupid, they're gonna figure it out. Somebody's gonna come and find your game, fall in love with it, and they're gonna say, I can use this X, Y, and Z combination. Or even better, they start finding some W's and V's or whatever other letter you wanna pick, and they put them together. And these are combinations you didn't even notice at first. And they go, well, that one can also take a token, and that one can generate a token, but under these conditions. And that's what I mean when a card game needs to be a puzzle. Break up your effects, your creature effects or your card effects. And there's no guarantee that you're using creatures in your card game. It might be your battleships or your uh, pirates or your, your heroes or your gods or whatever you want to use as your concept for your card game. Take their effects and break them up into the simplest form. Then when you have that simplest form, you go, oh, that could be better if it had this. No, 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 don't add that. Take that, make it your next card. Break them up into the simplest form because a TCG is a giant puzzle and it's an infinitely growing puzzle. You wanna add as many tiny pieces as you can so people can take just a handful and start making their own picture. You don't know what picture's gonna come out but they're gonna just start putting those pieces together like a jigsaw and they're gonna make a beautiful deck and that's what you want from a TCG. So remember, simplify your effects and let your players make their own puzzle. And adding a little bit onto the puzzle, I'd just like to address power creep. We need to watch out for power creep as creators, you and I. When you take a card that has a three and a four for stats, and you have another card that has a three and a five, but their summoning costs are the same. Well, you're always gonna use a three and a five. I mean, that's the beauty of having added effects or utilities added to the card games. Say this card has a three and a four general stats. I'm not saying the three and the four do anything. We're just using numbers to break down. So this card has a three and a four general stats, but it can increase those stats temporarily beyond this three and the five card. Now this card can start to be useful. Perhaps this three and the five card 
has a negative effect for being stronger where it would momentarily lose stats or perhaps they don't change stats at all perhaps they do something else if we're having a quick brainstorm here say the three and the four is good at summoning other creatures to the field so you get this three and the four card on the field and it can bring more cards onto the field of perhaps similar stats now this three and a five is stronger but it doesn't have that ability so then you start to create balance that way in that gray area that gray area is where it is vital you need players to second guess which one is the better card sometimes these cards will go better in certain decks and then sometimes they go better in other decks so like i said before we're looping around back to the puzzle idea you're cre keeping it as vague as possible so people can jam those little pieces of the jigsaw in whichever slot they want and just see what picture they create now the next thing i want to address is what makes your game special what is unique about your game that other games don't have what is that little aspect i mean it can be completely the theme you say oh nobody's done pirates before i know i've already used pirates as an example but i like pirates so say you take treasure planet as an example that was a really interesting theme you had pirates and then you had space space pirates and to make that a type of card game it's a unique enough theme that you know that other card games haven't really been created from that at least not ones that are popular enough to justify dominating the space that perhaps you could come in and fill a niche role in that theme so themes are really important it's important to have that uniqueness that unique aspect that draws players to that draws players to your card game but another thing i want to talk about is the uniqueness of the player style so taking Shard TCG as an example, when Richard and I first conceptualized Shard TCG, we went through certain ideas and it has fell in the theme aspect very close to Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic the Gathering, just summoning creatures and waging war. Very simple, very basic. So the theme isn't too different from those, but the play style the place that we addressed in a completely different way the real theme of the playstyle, if that makes sense is the idea behind how the cards interact with each other so if we go from season one of Yu-Gi-Oh when crazy rules used to happen all the time we used to have episodes where Yugi would attack the moon I mean that's a famous one if you remember it and there's the one where he attacks the ring of Castle of Dark Illusions. And there's the one where Mokyu the Magical Mist is still on the field. And he uses Summon Skull and it does extra damage because Weevil's Great Moth is still wet. There's these concepts. Things that were forgotten. And the game, and the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't work in that same way. Now what I really want to address with Shard TCG were those moments, those Eureka moments, those Dungeons and Dragons style moments where you go, well I don't attack the enemy, I attack the wall and the wall sparks because the room filled up with gas and now it's exploded. That type of aspect and you go, I forgot the room filled up with gas from earlier, it was like several turns ago when, I don't know, we killed that creature and it had that acidic lung thing or you you understand what i mean hopefully so with shard tcg we want to address that more so with our cards we have spell effects and the spell effects will read if we interact with this creature then it will do this but if we interact with this type of creature it will do this instead and we have this on some cards there are still mono basic cards that will just interact with one type of creature but we wanted to put in two or three on some cards and this creates that Dungeons and Dragons type feel because some of them uh, they are so niche that they probably would never come up in a battle but there's the potential for them to come up in the battle and the potential gives the players that unique feel and they go, alright, I'm going to take this card 
Say for example, we've got a new card coming in set two and it's called Spirit Root. This card is for plants. It's 100% for plants. You play this card on the field. If a plant is destroyed, the Spirit Root activates and you can summon a card of a lower level cost than that plant onto the field. So it's like when one, one plant dies, the root summons a new plant to the field. And this creates a constant flow of plants on the field because plants are based around having a lot of field presence. We want to make sure that is incorporated into the game. Now the secondary effect of this spell is when a phase creature is summoned to the field, it will activate the spirit root. With the spirit root being spirit and therefore very phase oriented, with phase being quite spiritual. It empowers the spirit root and creates more phase energy and the phase energy will take one plant from the graveyard and you can add it back to your deck. So it's a good way of get generating plants from your graveyard, incorporating them back into your deck, reshuffling, and then you have a chance to use that plant again. And it's, it's a small secondary effect, so it can be open to having a plant phase deck, if you like, or if you just want a plant deck, or a plant deck and a certain other element, you can still do that. Now, if your opponent were to use a phase deck, or have a deck with phase creatures in, and they're adding these to the field, then they're empowering you, but they're doing it in a passive way where this card just happens to generate. There's that, there's that part of the game, that unpredictability. It's like, well, you didn't realize, but my secondary effect is this, which means that you have just benefited me. And it's just those small things that we want to add to Shard TCG, those Yu-Gi-Oh type things, the, aha, you forgot about this type effect where if this interacts with a certain thing, it will incorporate it into the game and it will benefit or change the outcome. And we have that with other examples. We have things like Frost Shard. And if you attack anything with a Frost Shard, it's gonna do damage. But if you attack a Frost creature with Frost Shards, it will generate, uh, is, I think it's strength or is it shielding? I think it generates shields. Uh, it'll generate shields onto the frost creature, so the, the icicles empower the frost creature instead of damaging. And that can happen sometimes where you just cast frost shard, you forget your opponent's a frost creature, you've just made it stronger. So you have to watch out for things like that as well. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the TCG run. I have one more thing that I want to cover, and I've said it before on the Discord, if you haven't checked out the Discord or you're not a part of it, then it is in the link below. Join us. We have a great community. There's a lot of friendly people there. We'll be happy to get you started in Shard TCG. Just don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, and you're always welcome to join. So the last thing that I want to add to this video is hatred. And not just hatred, but any emotion. But I just want to highlight hatred. Hatred is a very powerful and positive emotion. Now, what do I mean by that? If someone expresses hatred of your game in any way, use it. It's a good thing. Why do they hate it? Either use it to learn and change or embrace that hatred. And when I say embrace, I mean, if that is a hatred to a specific card in your game, don't get rid of the card. Do not, do not get rid of the card because that card is making that player feel something for your game. And if that player feels something for your game, you're on the right tracks. Now, how do you turn that hatred into love? It doesn't have to be love for that card, it just has to be love for the game. Now, say you've got this annoying character in the game, say like, if we're taking like a night's mobs, we have uh, the combat, hated by many. It is a, an ape that throws poop. And a lot of people hate it because they're just small, annoying, weak things. They throw poop and they nerf you. Basically, they stop, they stop you, they debuff you. That's the word. So people hate that. So why doesn't Lycanite just take that out of Lycanite's mobs? Well, simply the game wouldn't be as good without it. And that's because people don't talk about it. People will just forget about it. 
You want people to talk about that story where somebody was running along from something a lot deadlier and they were about to escape. And then what happens? A combat just comes out of nowhere, throws some poop at you, and the thing be that was chasing you catches you, kills you. Oh, it's a shame. You want people to talk about that hatred because next time they're gonna talk about how they went back and they wiped them all out, that they killed every single combat and that they now have a permanent vengeance, a permanent vendetta against combas. They're gonna hunt down every single one. They start forming groups of people. They start making new friends from it and they're united by this hatred. They start chasing them all down and wiping them out. And that's why in Shard TCG, we want to eventually add combas. The only thing that we've added of combas in Shard TCG so far is a spell for insects which i'll just throw up on the screen now and it's a combo and pain and that's a good thing because we're playing to that humor as well like people want the combo to suffer we've shown a card of a combo suffering and it's suffering pretty bad and we do that because we know the fans like it and eventually we will add a combo and we hope that we make it annoying because if we do then we'll get beautiful stories about when somebody summons five combas against you the other person wipe them all out and that other person will be talking about how they wiped out all those combas in one fell swoop and that'll be their favorite part of shard they'll be going my greatest memory of playing shard tcg will be wiping out those horrible little apes <laughs> that have been pestering me all game they were just kept getting re-summoned i couldn't get rid of them but then bam i played this card and this card together i'd never played this combination before i wiped down all the combos and now this game is amazing this is my favorite game because i got to defeat the thing i hated the most that is why hatred is a powerful emotion and you should use it use it in your game use it in storytelling use it just in life you know when you have hatred it's okay to use it it's a powerful emotion for a reason it motivates you be motivated by that and create something amazing the more annoying the better but just don't overdo it one or two at the most maybe one a set make one annoying little thing a set but if you start doing it with every single one and obviously it's going to be too much you will drive people away you know but keep one keep the special one and you'll know when it comes up you'll know which one's the special one so i definitely recommend doing that so i hope these pieces of advice in this little rant has helped people out and i hope it leads to you making a better tcg you know it's a different way of looking at things it's not your typical how to make a tcg video i just want to do something that emphasizes things that other people will easily skip over so maybe this video won't get as many views because it isn't the typical oh, use this type of card or use this color scheme it's not the artistic side it's not the technical side it's it's something in between it's everything else but but all those other videos they've been made go and check out those videos i encourage it you know there's some great ones out there and they've helped me a lot but I don't want to make another one of those videos when there's so many good ones out there. I can't compete with that. So let me know what you think of this video. And I hope you leave a like and of course subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll make more videos like this. If you have any other video suggestions, please help me out. And we'll make those. We'll try and make those and we'll make them to as good a quality as we possibly can. Okay guys, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.